let's see what's next up there. Okay, Ryan, here is our 25-foot chimichanga. I love the internet. For our next spectacle here is our chimichanga. But we go from John there's... Jones domestic abuse. I did to chimichanga. I like that twenty five foot chimichanga. I mean, why not? That's, that's a true. It just sounds yeah, just it, just a good segue there. This is overtime, a live series brought to you by Rig Links and War Room Media, where we talk about basically anything we want. And here are your hosts, Greg Williams and Ryan Ray. Whoa, <laughs> that's been a uh, what is that about six, seven weeks now? Golly, has it we're been not, long? uh, yeah, we're not, I'm not being real consistent here with this, but uh, hey, it's been a good, been a, been a long run here, but uh, hey, before I just letting people join on the show here, but uh, yeah. Uh, before we get started, I kind of wanted to introduce Ryan again for our listeners. Um, this is Ryan Roast. Uh, Ryan Roast. Roast. Ryan, Ryan Roast. Roast. Ryan Roast. Hey, that's actually pretty good. I though. like that. I like uh, that. I'm going to change my name. Ryan, <laughs> uh, Ryan Ray, our co-host here uh, with uh, on Overtime, but he is the CEO of Array Global Advisors, CEO of War Room Media, member of the Board of Advisors at George H.W. Bush Foundation for U.S. China Relations, VP of Media Relations and Partner, Jubilee Royalty, and host of Inside War Room Energy Week podcast and Texas Oil and Gas podcast. Man, you got it all. That's impressive. And that's, I mean, you're actually an impressive guy. So here's the legend, man. How's things well, out in Granbury? Listen, listen, let's not, let's, you know, as Ben would say, <laughs> uh, let's don't let the facts get in the way of a good story, right? So, oh, uh, well, you know. <laughs> good, good story. How has it been these days? Good, uh, you good. know, I just I was just talking to him right before we hopped on, and he's, you know, the same guy that no one likes. So <laughs> all those friends, nothing. I've to just got to give him a hard time. No, Ben's a good dude. Obviously, I'm gonna give him a hard time for those who those who don't know. Um, no, Ben's good. He's good, man. Um, matter of fact, I'll probably try to tag him in a post or something to see if I can get him to come on the podcast. He always gives me a hard time on his shows, and so I need to give him a hard time on my shows more often well let's see what we can get here for our rundown um yeah mm-hmm. all right so we'll go across the oil prices uh flared gas and bitcoin mining uh china doing some drilling Beijing puts the brakes on foreign spectators. Uh, UFC and John Jones, a 25 foot chimichanga and a 2,195 pound pump. Chimichanga. A 25 foot chimichanga. I don't like a three inch or a six inch chimichanga, much less a 25 footer. I've never been a man, chimichanga you've, guy. You've never been a chimichanga guy, man. Mm-mm. I like burritos. I like tacos. I like quesadillas. I like nachos. I like fajitas. Never been a big chimichanga guy. Oh, man. Really? Yeah. I just, How can you not like chicken, cheese, and tortillas, man? Is that? I think it's the way they fry them. I've had some with spinach and stuff in there, and it's not. I mean, I like spinach, but not on much of each other. I mean, I know, I, I know why, Ryan. I mean, I'm just gonna put that out there because Burger King doesn't make chimichangas. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. When you asked about Ben, that's the, okay. Now I see where this is going. No, I see. Wow. Wow. <laughs> just right out just right out the box. Right out the I'm glad we've took off six weeks to come back to this. This is <laughs> this is great. This is great. It's good to be back. Really. Well, really good to be back. You can't cut anybody any slack. That's, no. No, 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 no. No slack. No slack. I don't blame you. <laughs> so for the uh WTI, we have seventy-four dollars and forty-four cents. And for the uh, Brent, we have a seventy-seven dollars and ninety cents. So API data for the weekend in September the twenty-fourth showed an increase of four point one two seven million barrels. Although there was a gain in inventory, there was also four million more barrels consumed than expected. Where our economists expected two point three million, and then draw was actually six point one million. So Ryan, oil's been rallying here as of late, just taking a bit of a breather now, but. What are your thoughts behind it? I mean, at this point, you know, I was very skeptical of the prices earlier in the year, but right now it's, it feels like the perfect storm, right? You know, U.S. production is not really picking up. 
Um, we'll have to see what happens with international demand as we come into, you know, winter cold season, flu season, and, you know, now COVID season. And so, um, you know, will we see more shutdowns or people traveling less? I don't know, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. You see OPEC flip the cards here. I think they bring um, on some more production there and, uh, maybe a little bit, but you know, they had to put, they had to turn it on pretty significantly to, to get the price back. Now the price is where it should be. It's, it's for, for like us producers, right? Right. The weird thing is, is that prices are in the seventies and eighties gas in the $5 range and U S production ain't going crazy. That's what's weird. Yeah. With, uh, with, uh, more import imports as well. So. Right. Right. So on to a little bit of the market news. Um, so I ran across this one, I guess, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I wanted to chat with you about it. But this flared gas and this Bitcoin mining. So do you have any background on any of that? Or I've looked into some of it. I know some groups who have done some stuff or, or have looked into doing some stuff with it. But that's that's um, kind of my extent. I haven't worked on it personally. Okay. So like I heard, I heard some people talking about it late last year. And to be honest, I, I'm kind of like probably most people didn't pay it. Didn't pay it much attention, but uh, looks like there's something brewing here with it. Uh, there was an article here from CNBC on a meeting that took place here early in September about the same topic uh, in Houston. So there is uh, Adam Ortloff. Ortloff. I'm going to say that wrong, and I did multiple times. Anyway, he heads up uh, business development in the U.S. for Upstream Data, a company that uh, manufactures and supplies portable mining solutions for oil and gas facilities. He goes into some of the chemistry behind flaring and why the systems are useful. When the CH4 methane combusts, the only exhaust is CO2 and H2O vapor, which is literally the same thing that comes out as we exhale. Um, even with the flares, they're only about 75 to 90 percent efficient, he claims. Basically, some of the methane is being vented without being combusted, of course. Um, when you run the methane through an engine or a generator, 100% of the methane is combusted and none of it leaks uh, or vents to the air. But of course, no one will run these generators unless they can make some money um, because of the cost to kind of acquire them, maintain them, and uh, so on and so forth. He says that it makes economical uh, sustainability for oil and gas companies to combust their methane rather than externally combust it with a flare. They currently have 140 of these Bitcoin mines at the moment. Um, any additional thoughts there, Ryan? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think I think the question that, that I've often wondered is, is where does it no longer make sense, right? So at what point does it, do you get, and, you know, if natural gas is a dollar, it makes a lot of sense probably. Sure. If natural gas is $5, does it make sense then? And that's not, it's not just natural gas price. It's also... The price of bitcoin right because if bitcoin theoretically was 10 million dollars it would always make sense so i think those are the questions that i haven't seen anyone inside the industry that has worked on this kind of breakdown how they look at it and what they consider to be the right margin so well me it looks like a, um, it would be a lot of factors there for scalability so um the uh, first off, you have Bitcoin, as you say, then you have the price of gas, then you have, um, say, the availability of equipment or anything like this or personnel to operate or run it or whatever. But it looks like there's a lot of things that would, I mean, 140 mining stations now, it seems like they've got, seems like they've got quite the yeah. idea there. Right. I, I'm just saying, just from my perspective, I, I'm just curious about those angles. I don't know. I'd, I'd love to, if we know someone who does it, I'd love to talk to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So not, if anybody not, out there knows anybody, jump in yeah. there. Yeah, not on the Bitcoin side. I know those guys. I'm curious on the operator side because uh you know, the Bitcoin guys obviously are incentivized to, you know, kind of screw or another. Of course, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm with you there. It's, so if there's operators out there that's uh that's looking to uh you know take care of some of their flared gas through a mining station, then yeah, I'd I'd love to hear from them too. Absolutely. It'd be awesome. The other thing there, Ryan, was that uh, there was an article that came out here a while back about uh, China, and uh, I th actually it was a blurb in the Rostat report. But uh, it looks like uh, they're looking to throw some some serious cash into the game. It looks like 120 billion 
before 2025. So that'd be CNPC, CNOC, and Sinopec together expected to spend about $123 billion on drilling and whale services. That's a lot of whales, dude. Hundred. I know. Uh, yeah, I don't even. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of whales. Um, I mean, to run, I guess, uh, millions of cars, buses, and drugs over the next five years, it'll take a heck of a lot of oil. What do you think? Yeah. Well, <laughs> of course, of course, right? I mean, it's a deal where we we keep talking about this, which is, you know, uh, oil per oil. Consumption's peaked, oil demand's peaked. That's that's just hogwash. It's just it's totally. just not true. And trash. And and we're seeing that the price is going up. No one is sitting here as a price. So you could see the price go up because the supply is being drawn down, and people are like, Oh, well, who cares? The price is going up and it's gonna eventually go so high they don't want to use it, but at that point we won't need it anymore. No one is saying that. No, no one, one in the world is like, hey, who cares well, how yeah, high we're, price d- we're done. We're done with right. the world. We're close to $200 a barrel. We'll just quit using it. They're all like, okay, it's getting high. We don't want it to get out of control because they know we're going to be on oil for the rest of our lives. They all know. Yes. That, so. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's crazy. I like the way you, they know we're going to be on oil for the rest of our life. I mean, rest I mean, rest of our life. Yeah. And our kids' lives. It definitely for the definitely for the foreseeable future. Exactly, they all know it. <laughs> dun dun dun. When is uh, the new season of uh, Mandalorian coming out, man? I don't know. I did. I see thought it was supposed that... to be fall of this year, was it not? No, it's 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 like um. Well, the book of Boba Fett comes out in December the 29th, I think I saw the other day. Right. So I don't know if they're going to let that whole season roll out before Mandalorian rolls uh, comes. So I don't know if they're running at the same time. Gotcha. I don't know. Um, but Book of Bubba Fett's like December 29th. I think they just announced it. Sweet. You want me to ask about the Clone Wars? I, I can't. I, you already made your Burger King joke. Hey, man. Hey. Um, don't. I did don't, watch, don't. Hey, I did watch um, all of mm-hmm. the Game of Thrones finally. Never watched Game of Thrones. I did. Uh, when you're when you're in some of the places that I'm in, I run out of stuff to actually. Right. Yeah, to watch or to watch Clone Wars. <clears throat> I could, but I don't have that much time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't have that much time. I don't have that much time. I, I don't have seven seasons of time. I have time to watch seventeen hours of whatever that the the dragon show is, but I don't have it, time. It for was. That. It was. It 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 was different. That's sure. That's for sure. I know. I know now why I kind of stayed clear of it, but um, it it. So you watched the whole thing. I did watch the whole thing. I, I did. So so it was really good for about the first six seasons. And um, it really kind of uh, you can tell they were the writers were rushed to kind of get off of it and get onto another project uh, from the uh, from some of the readings I was doing. So it seems like the the writers were looking to move off of Game of Thrones and move over to something with Disney. I think I think mm-hmm. there was I thought I'm, I can't remember exactly which one was coming in behind Game of Thrones during that kind of time mm-hmm. frame. But um, it looks like they rushed through and made a few mistakes in that kind of like uh, last season, and come to find out that Disney didn't want them after the. After oh, the, oh yeah, that's not good. Yeah, I know. So basically, they rushed through it and uh, ended up with, without having a job with Disney at the end. But anyway, well, the other it was thing, all right. Didn't the, the 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 author of the books? I don't think he's ever finished the the last book, and so they have that problem as well. Yeah. So, when you don't have an ending to the story, then I mean, it makes it kind of tough. It does. It does. All right. So we move hey, on. Hey, there is, uh, yeah, but there's Alyssa. Alyssa. Yeah. Morning. Blame Griff Worth. for us not being here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Definitely blame me. Hopefully, with uh, things that will level out here, we can have a couple more shows here oh, actually in, in sync. Well, I mean, I mean, it's factually we, true, we, but we, do one, gonna... we need to do some live one day, right? I don't know we do these continuously like this. We need to do it with each live? other live. Yeah, like not oh, like live in person. Like oh, yeah, you in person. mean in person? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, man. wow. Yeah, that'd need be to catch fun. up and do one. Uh, yeah. You know, I was just down in Houston the other day. Was you? I was this down... is where all the money's at, man. Uh, tell me about it. I was down um, two Saturdays ago. I came down, I uh, actually came down on a Friday. I had a meeting. Uh, if I tell you, you're going to laugh at me. 
but I had a meeting with the president of Ghana. Oh, that's all right. And so I came down, I came down and, and uh, to Houston for that. So, so those weird things you're like, you know, I had a meeting. I mean, it wasn't like a private meeting. It was a, uh, like 15 or 20 of us in the room, but I uh, like Ghana. Yeah. No, it was good. It was good. I like Ghana. I like most parts of West Africa, to be honest. Well, yeah, you're, I'm, you're I'm a good just, guy. So I've, en- uh, I've enjoyed it. <laughs> you're a good guy. Yeah. All right, let's get over here to sports. Uh, so it looks like uh, Beijing uh, would be putting the brakes on foreign spectators. I mean, not that probably was a whole bunch of people just jumping there buying tickets. But um, speaking of sports and COVID, although, I, again, I'm going to add here, like I've had many other conversations that we kind of figured our way around most of this, but um, no foreign spectators will be allowed inside to watch the winter games in Beijing. This came from the International Olympic Committee yesterday. Um, this will also include lengthy quarantines for unvaccinated participants and daily COVID-19 testing. So I still do not understand the daily part of it. But anyway, so to anyone out there that was just thinking about like headed out to Beijing, go ahead and get you a refund on those tickets. Ryan, were you planning on going? Uh, no. Um, no, <laughs> no. I mean, I, I, I've never been to the Olympics, and it's not really like a a. Um, if I was going to go, dude, it'd be like snowboarding, or it'd be like uh, X Games stuff. It'd be something like that. It'd be something that I would want to. Well, I'm, I'm I'm really not that much of a mar. I watch a lot of marathons, and you know, you, a lot of you, uh, baton handoffs and like javelins. So I've just never been that guy. You know, I don't like the Olympics. Well, period. I mean, you don't like even like the wrestling, or you don't like the box. You don't like the box. You don't like none of it, huh? I mean, there's got to be something in there that you like, dude. Do we want to get into this? Do we really want to go down this bunny hole, and make everybody mad? I'll be happy to. I'm that go, guy. Go ahead, go ahead, man. You, the Olympics you, you can give us is, a little blurb there. The Olympics is the biggest waste of time in modern human history, only surpassed by TikTok. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I'm I'm coming in hot, baby. Coming in hot. Oh. Coming in hot. Okay. Coming in hot. And by the way, we're gonna stick a plug in there. We have eleven thousand followers on there. I mean, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. Just saying. I'm not mad at you on TikTok. I'm not mad at you for watching the Olympics. But listen, if you're, I will turn on curling. That's the little broom because it's hilarious that that's considered a sport in the Olympics. Go look up. Go look up the list of sports. We have gardening. We have rock skipping. We have looking. Wait, we have, types. didn't we? We talked about this before. We have break dancing in there now. Break dancing, yes. We have all kinds of things that are irrelevant. It is a money crap. And if you like that, man, more power to you. But if I'm Isn't going it to just sh- like a competition? I mean, can anything be competitive and be a sport too? I mean. Okay. Okay. I mean. By that definition, let's have the 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 pin twirlers there to see who can twirl twirl the pin the fastest or whatever. I mean, yes, you can do that. I'm just saying none of those things interest me. I will turn it on. I will turn it on when you have like Michael Phelps or Bolt or someone like that who is so far ahead. You're wanting to see just greatness on steroids over and over again. Will because there's never been steroids there. Really. Well, they're all on steroids, but that's a separate discussion. <laughs> um, <laughs> these guys are really juiced up. No, what I'm saying is, mm. you know, like when Phelps was racing there at the end, it's like, okay, is he ever going to lose? Like, I want to see that. I want to see, you know, the, the theater of that. Yeah, you want to see the history. The yes, history that's in interesting. Yeah. Bob from Idaho winning the first <laughs> ever curling or bobsledding event, could care less about. Could care less about. <laughs> I think it's Bob. Again, I'm not mad at anybody for doing it. It's just, Nothing against care. Bob. Nothing is Bob. I'm happy for Bob. Bob can come on my podcast Bob. and tell me about how he won the golden curling from Idaho. And I'm happy to hear a story. I'm just not watching the Olympics. I'm just not. <laughs> it's I don't I don't I don't even understand well, it anymore. Well, you're uh, you're not gonna be watching it in person, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, so I'm not gonna uh, pay so the win- to go to the China win- no. to get daily COVID tested to watch a bunch of things that I don't now now no, let me let me let me let me let me retract that. If someone wants to pay me to be their correspondent for the Olympics, and I'm getting paid to watch them, then yeah, I'm happy to go. I'm getting, I'm getting. I'm Winter getting. Olympics for 2022. So that I is, ain't getting no anal swab. When is no um, so so doing, so 2022 Winter Olympics? So next year, winter next year. 
No, um, it's, it's this. Is this coming? It's twenty twenty two. Oh, okay, okay, right? okay, okay. Right? Yeah, but Think we have it. moved. We, we have made leaps and bounds over this stuff. For what are we doing? All oh yeah, we can COVID now skate every around the. Day. We can skate around the rink three times instead of Amazing. four. Amazing. Amazing. It's it's oh. Like, speaking <laughs> speaking of COVID related news, um, first base coach for the Sox is going to be booted before. Um. The uh, before they go into the playoffs because he's not vaccinated. You know, if you say anything yeah. about this um, the wrong way, YouTube will ban you. Will it? Yeah, yeah. I saw that too. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, but this is about. Uh, this is about. Yeah, I saw. This that. is a visual podcast. Visual. So, so hold on, look right here. This is great news. So is this why you were asking about yesterday <laughs> about uh, about finding a new? Uh, yes. Oh, uh, was this because of this yes. vaccine thing? Yes. Hmm. I don't care your stance on it. I just want to be able to have a, a discussions. And I bring on people on inside the war room who say all kinds of stuff. And I don't, you know, I don't want my whole podcast on YouTube to be tied to their changing policies. And, and listen, like that's, it's not even about this particular issue. The we're getting to a spot now that you, we, we just all have to realize that we're going to wake up one day and we're going to be on the wrong side of whatever the issue is. Hmm. And that's the problem, right? No matter what, no matter what you think of this issue or any issue, you're gonna wake up one day and you're gonna be on the wrong side of the issue. I mean, we covered a story last year where Twitter banned people for criticizing NATO. You know, NATO, which is like the biggest sham organization in the world. Agreed. Um, and and people were getting on Twitter getting banned for it. You know, I didn't know like that was a a, a faux pas. I thought that was like Tuesday you made fun of NATO. So. Just um, throwing that up there from being just letting you know. Man. Why are we hating on curling athletes? I gave Bob from Idaho. <laughs> you gave him the, you, you, you did. Okay. You did. You Listen, did. more people watch this podcast. We talk about Bob <laughs> Idaho than we'll watch him on the Bob. Road. And Bob can come on inside the war room and tell a story and get all emotional. Okay. Listen, I am not an anti curler. Okay. I'm not that. I'm just not going to watch it. Yeah. Paralympics uh, table tennis sounds pretty interesting as well from Paul. So, so you'd be like watching the Olympics. Ben, let me tell you something. Ben, Ben, <laughs> why has Ben got to be here for starters? The Burger King jokes have already started, Ben, without you, so we don't need you for those, but thank you anyway. Ben's the guy. Ben's the kind of guy who's going to get on YouTube and go to NBC's channel and watch like the three minute highlight clip and be like, man, I'm all in on the Olympics this year. They're awesome. The three minute, the three yeah. minute highlight clip. Yeah. Then they go like around the Olympics and show like the top plays or whatever. And Ben's like, man, I am deep into this stuff. That's Ben. <laughs> That's Ben. That's Ben. Ben, yes, you don't even, don't even deny it. Don't even deny it. Is he going to deny it? I don't know if he's still here or not. I don't know. He better not deny it. Here's the uh, here's another one though, about UFC and John Jones. Oh gracious, what a story, huh? Terrible man, terrible. So we obviously we talk anytime we have over anytime we're gonna we're gonna be on here talking we're gonna talk about fights. It's just what just what we do. It's better than talking about COVID. But um, here's uh, here's John Jones. Take it easy. He hasn't been in the ring since uh, what the twenty. What February 2020, something like that. Forever uh, yeah. sits with a record 26 1 and 0 back in uh, back in the news for domestic violence uh this last Friday. Um, any of our listeners out there can can go read up on it. It's actually quite sad when the when the youngest child asks the uh lady at the uh, hotel desk to call the police. So although I got lots of uh time for Dana White and the UFC tribe, uh, what are your thoughts here? I mean, obviously Dana holds the line when it comes to legal outcomes and kind of plays off of that. But what do you think here? Okay. So there's a couple issues at hand. One, first off, and let me just say this, this is not a John Jones comment. My kids will always ask me, which fighter do you like? Which fighter do you not like? And I will say, I like this guy or in UFC cases, girl or, or whatever. Right. And they'll say, why? And I say, I don't know. I just, I just like the way they fight. I like something about them. Sometimes I don't like them. It, there's no real rhyme or reason. There are a few exceptions to that rule uh, because I, I really, by and large, try not to follow much of who these people are outside of the cage because if they're very crafty, then they're going to give you an image that you're going to have a hard time deciphering what's what, right? So you, you won't know um, 
what they are based upon their social media. So I don't, I don't try to get caught up into, you know, who they are. Just about, right. do, do I enjoy them when they're in the cage? They're to entertain me because that's what they're there for. Let's make no mistake about it. They're there to entertain you um, and to win the fight. That's their two two objectives, to make it entertaining and to win. Uh, sell tickets. Get it yes, done. sell tickets. That's exactly, exactly right. If you don't believe me, I can give you plenty of names of guys who are good fighters who just went away because they didn't sell tickets. Um, John Jones, with that being said, John Jones is the exception to that rule because he is – 100% a fraud. Like, so take Chell Sonnen. Chell Sonnen had this whole shtick he used to do where he was kind of like the old wrestler shtick. Like, he would get in there, and you could tell he was doing a shtick. And it was funny if you got it, you know. And Jones, when he's on the microphone in the in the octagon or, or whatever, the stuff that you do watch surrounding the fight, he's just a fraud. And yet I cannot stand him. And the way the media tries to cover these guys as it, cause they won't access. That's what they want. They won't access to John Jones. Um, he's a bad person. He's been a bad person for years. Uh, this is not the first run in. This is not the second run in. This no. is not the third run in. This is not the fourth run in. There are multiple run ins. He's a cheater. He did. He, he was doing cocaine before fights. He's take performance enhancing drugs. Um, so I, I have, so we know. We, so we, so, so, so we, we know you don't like John Jones, but what about Dana? Well, I had to get that out there. That was a little no, I know. I'm, I hear you. I hear you. I'm. I'm. I feel the exact same way, especially whenever you, you, um, you read more into his past and his yeah. history and everything else. It's just, it's absolute well, trash from a business perspective. You know, Dana's always been on the outside of the law when it comes to things, or he's been in line with it. Right. right. So he stays. He kind of stays. He waits to see kind of what the general public is going to do mm -hmm. about the situation. Then he. He, he he goes strictly in a business nature for it. So he doesn't. So for me, it looks like he doesn't care what happens here. That he's in it for. Uh, he's going to be in it for the entertainment purposes. So well, if the people want to see John Jones back in the ring, he'll put him back in the in the ring. Right. And so here's the thing: if you're Dana White, how much news has this really gotten? Okay, the fight fans know about it. Sure. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about getting banned in a second. The fight fans know about it. Um, but is ESPN leading every night talking about this? Is no. this on Fox News? No, right? Okay, no. So you, you got to put in context now. If it gets worse and he were to, you know, really do something atrocious or someone were to get really hurt, and I'm not trying to minimize what's happened, but you know, someone were to die, per se, um, then you would come back and say, Well, yeah, Dana, you, you knew this was a trajectory and you kept willing and dealing with him that's one thing the second thing is if you cut him if you cut him he goes over to bellator the next day or to one at one fc or to wherever he dominates that and they sit there and try to build their promotion off of the guy that you cut like it's not as if he's going to get cut and no one's going to pick him up right. someone will pick him he'll have offers immediately and then he will go over there and he will probably be the best and then they will say we have the best whatever heavyweight in the world the UFC, and so they will use that to bring in viewers because at the end of the day, how many people are not going to buy a pay per view because John Jones is on it? I'm certainly not making a decision whether I'm buying or not. John Jones, I, I buy my UFCs based upon the totality of the main card, right? If it's the good main, main card, card is, the main card is, is certainly, if, yeah. yeah. So, the, 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 the it's very hard for me to buy just a headline fight within the UFC. If the main card's great, I mean, if the if the I mean, if the, if the, if the main card's great, uh, yeah, I mean, if the headline's great. It, and the main card's, you know, not interesting. I probably buy it. So if John Jones, so John Jones and Jake Paul. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. So right. So he could go fight Jake Paul. Jake Paul never fighting, but he could go theoretically fight Jake Paul and Mark make a ton of money. Sure. Um. So when it's only hurts. You go to BKFC. The UFC. Yeah, BKFC. It only hurts the UFC. So the, here's, I mean, and I. So I wanted to say, what about the reason I want to go so hard on John Jones is to make this. Cause what I'm about to say is I don't blame the UFC for not cutting him. Like, I don't blame them. And I'm not saying they should or shouldn't. I'm saying I don't blame them because of all the things I just said is that he's going to go to Bellator or somewhere else, and they're going to use that to try to catch up to the UFC. Mm -hmm. And the UFC is in the money-making business just like we all are. Now, if you want to say on moral principles that he should get kicked out, let me just tell you, almost a large If you go on just moral principles the uh, roster only. At, the, the large portions of the roster of the UFC – would exactly. Be found, would would have to go, and that's yeah, the thing. Yeah. We don't know all of that. 
I, I don't even think UFC would have started if it had been on moral principles. Yeah. So, and so I, I don't mean, like John Jones. <laughs> I don't pull for John Jones. I pull our root from him to lose. I cannot stand him. Like him, Tito Ortiz. There's a Conor McGregor. There's a few fighters I just don't like. Now, there's a lot of guys I root against, but I don't have a problem with them personally. I don't like John Jones, but I don't like if you cut him, okay, cut him. But realize this is you, business owner, cutting your best sales guy when he has all your information, all the things that can make you vulnerable. And then he's going to walk out the door and go to your competitor and he's going to dominate because he's not only your best guy, he's the best guy in the world. If what do they say? The even, 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 um, uh, bad media is still free media. Yeah. So, so I, so I, so I, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say, um, uh, that they should, they should cut him. That's, that's a decision. I, I'm not mad at you if you say that he should, the UFC should. I think that's a fine opinion to have. I'm just simply saying, I'm like, geesh, I would hate to be in their spot right now. That's what I guess. That's my take. I would hate to be in their spot trying to determine this. I'm sure Dano uh, nudges way in and out of it. Oh yeah, he, he he'll come out on top wherever it's at. He'll he'll come out. He'll 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 make a business decision on it and it'll be done. He won't he won't even say anything else about it. When someone asks him a question, you're like, I'm not talking about it. He'll move on. Done. Yep. All right. Let's see what's next up there. Okay, Ryan. Here is our 25 foot chimichanga. I love the internet. For our next spectacle, here is our chimichanga. But we go from John Jones domestic abuse. I did to chimichanga. I like that twenty five foot chimichanga. I mean, why not? That's, that's a true. It just sounds yeah, just it, just a good segue there. No, um, no. Arizona restaurant celebrated its seventy fifth anniversary by cooking a twenty five foot chimichanga that is believed to be the new Guinness Book of World Records. Dozen flour tortillas, five hundred pounds of shredded chicken. 200 pounds of refried beans, 250 pounds of rice, and multiple gallons of salsa. Holy tortilla. You told me earlier you don't like chimichangas. Mm-mm. I do. Mm-mm. Look at that chimichanga. Man. Look at that thing. I mean, well, we got to hit play. I can't, all I can see is like a... Can, hit play? You, can you play it? Let's yeah, here we I, go. Can't, I can't see it. I hope they don't say anything about the vaccine. Oh, well, yeah, well, well you might want to mute it then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in celebrated its 75th anniversary on Saturday by making a 25 foot, <laughs> seven inch long chimichanga. Oh Whoa, 25 foot, seven inch tall, she made that long. Okay, yeah. yeah. Look at these tortillas in there, man. World's first chimichanga. Did you know that? I had no. Okay, <clears throat> here's what we're going to do. All let's, right. Let's, let's get to the books. I will come down to Houston. We will do a live Rig Links event and we're going to cook a 30 foot chimichanga. And we're going to share it with all the people there. A 30-foot one. We're going to break the world record. A 30-foot one. Why not? Why not? I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> I mean, we, I'm we need to get the guys either. from Bare Knuckle to 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 uh, promote that. Yeah. To support yeah. that. Yeah. Well, there's plenty, there's plenty of folks in Houston we can get. We can get some folks in there to support it. The third, Next one up, 2,195-pound pumpkin. That's a big pumpkin. When you talk about That's things a on a large scale, pumpkin. when you talk about things on a large scale, typically I don't even think about pumpkins. I, I think about like buildings and cars and, you know, bodies of water and planes and, you know, things like that. I typically don't think about pumpkins, right? And I do, mm. um, not likely, but here we have uh, Jeff Thiel of Dillonville, Ohio, who took the top spot in the 57th uh annual barnesville pumpkin festival way off last wednesday night that's a huge pumpkin how do you even get that up without breaking it was jeff owes the giant pumpkin to a gentleman uh he got some seeds from that uh has just recently passed with cancer so Mm. unfortunately he couldn't see the outcome of the event but that is a hell of a pumpkin my friend what do you what do you do with it ryan after the competition's over do you like you make pies? Do you make a yeah, garage? Do you make a garage out of it? I mean, like a small shed. <laughs> well, that's I mean, what I was wondering. What, like, what do you do with the pumpkin after it's over? Yeah, I mean, what is it that? How, first off, how do you pick it up without busting it? Because it feels like that kind of weight on a pumpkin. Um, like, how does it hold itself up? I that thing's can, huge. It's huge, right? And then you got to have what, like a you know, a F two fifty just to haul it around. But to your a question, one pumpkin, yes, yeah, so a one pumpkin, and that's in low gear. Like you, you're struggling <laughs> getting up the hill. You're struggling to get up the hill. That thing. Um, a pallet there. So yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, 
It's, 20, keep, yeah. it's 2,400 pounds. 2,200. Yeah, 2,200 pounds. So massive. Yeah, it weighs you more than it, the truck you're driving. That's right. So I, I don't know. It is is the pumpkin tender and soft? Like, can you make a pie? Because you can make a ton of them, right? To your point. So I don't know. I really have no idea. That's anyway, a great question. A mother-in-law home out of it. Make your man shit out of it. Make a pumpkin man shit. Mm-hmm. That's <clears throat> still. I've all. I've. I've never been lucky enough to to see one of these large pumpkins, watermelons, one of these things like firsthand. So I, I can imagine being at the festival and people are typically like walking around and be like, oh yeah, that's nothing. I've seen that before. But I mean, me on the other hand, I'd be like, look at that huge ass pumpkin, man. <laughs> I mean, you like, you just don't ever, no, you, you don't. don't see pumpkins like that anywhere here. Ever. You don't, you don't actually see watermelons like that here either. You know, we, we see, I mean, what, what's the, what, what we see big bales of hay and yeah. big cows and things. We don't see like uh big pumpkins. I mean, you see big crawfish. I mean, like, you know, things like that, but you don't ever see anything <laughs> like that. Nope. Never see that. That's it's so weird. Right. I agree. I definitely. Agree. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Man. Oh man. I think that's us. That's us. Like, we cut it in under, under. 40 minutes. So that's Look fantastic, at man. Look at us. We're doing good. Well, it's the first show back. This is the first show weeks, back. So. You know, a couple guys talking about <laughs> and pumpkins. And what do you, my wife's like, and oh, shots like, what and is what? it you do with, with Greg? I talk pumpkins and stuff, you know, so. <laughs> What Listen. do you what do you guys talk about on your show? Uh, yeah. wow, uh, Jimmy Jangas and Pumpkins, Jimmy Chang, John, foot Jimmy John Jones, COVID nineteen. I mean, what is oh it? gracious, it's a full it's a full run, full run. It is. It really is. And listen, you don't get this content anywhere else. So I no, appreciate you don't. it for what it is. No, you don't. Not at all. So Ryan, tell us about your new newsletter there. And what you got going on? Yeah, so it's at the same spot it was before. Um, at least on the same email list and. You know, last year I spent a lot of time talking about political issues, geopolitical issues, this, that, and the other, and I kind of, I kind of got tired of it because a lot of reasons. Um, and it's, it's a space that is crowded, like anything else. And I would much rather talk to people about it than me talk about it, right? So I'd much rather right. get on some guests and go back and forth with them and try to write out my thoughts on that. Um, so I just shifted the content to something I spent a lot of time, which is business, marketing, investing, sales. You know, junk like that. So I'm going to be writing about those things. Um, you know, as you mentioned, I'm now a partner in a private equity firm. Um, obviously, I have my own businesses. And so I spend a lot of time in the business world, investing and stuff like that. Um, and so I, I, I want to tackle more of that type of content. I think um, I think that type of content, like, for instance, if you're going to write about China, there are real, and I have a thought on China that some are informed, some are not, uh, but there are real experts that are always like, and so it's, it's always kind of weird. It's like, okay, should I really be the one crafting thousand word pieces on China on a regular basis? Or should I let someone else do it? Right. I have a business. I don't, I hate to say I'm an expert. I don't like that term, but I have, I'm 36. I've been running businesses, uh, owning, operating, running since I was 22. So like I have, I have some pretty um, good experience in that field. Right. And so, I don't feel as I don't know if inadequate is the word, but I don't feel as as um I don't know, I don't know what the word is. And if it feels more 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 natural for me. And yeah. so um I like the geopolitics stuff, but it's just I just found it's just it's uh it's easier for me to talk to people about it, get their thoughts, um, and then um go from there. Well, I'm happy to see you branch it out in all different kinds of directions, man. Well, I, I have you're... a buddy, I have a buddy of mine, yeah. and he's like, Hey, you need to get back to writing. And I was like, I know. And he's like, listen, you need to publish a book. And I'm like, I know. And and listen, listen, don't ever think people when you tell your friends stuff that they don't listen. Because I had a buddy a few months ago. One of my good friends was encouraging me to do stuff. And he kind of pushed me back over the top. So that man is owed a thank you. We will, we will, he will not be named on this show, though. Will he not? He will not be named on this show. I'm not going to name him. You can name him if you want. But I'm not going to name him. Well. Just to let you know, I'm in. I'm I'm five chapters in. So uh, <laughs> I was. Um, I took I took the same advice and 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 went back in and uh, yeah. So well, it's good um, to take your own advice, right? That's always a good. Step. Well, we try. We That's... I mean we as as people that that do speak publicly and speak to groups of people and you know and do things like this, especially 
media and stuff that goes probably all around the world, hopefully plug, um, that we have to like believe some of what we say, do we not? That much. This I mean, Ben doesn't believe anything he says. So what? Well, I mean, it's only you can only fit so much in a three minute highlight. <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. That's a great line there. Oh, man. That's well, <laughs> well, folks, that's all for us this week. I'm Greg with Rig Links, and that is Ryan with War Room what? Media. War Greg Room Media. The five wide business. Five wide business. Go check it out. Listen, listen. Go check it out. Go, go check, check it out. out. Check out Rig Links, people. We well, already at Rig Links, but go check them out some more. And I do owe you a thanks, Greg, because I do appreciate you kind of giving me that nudge to get back into the throw my hat back in the ring here and start popping my gums again. So I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to see some more. I want to see some more books come out of you, man. I'm ready. I know. I know. Um, it's, it's all, it is something I, listen, I've got, um, books on writing books around here. So I'm, I'm in, I'm in, I just gotta get it done. So do it, it, man. Do it. All right, let's get it done. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us this week. Yep. Thanks guys. Good to be back, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll try to hit another one for next week. Thanks for joining us for another edition of overtime and that's a wrap peace out out I say that you've been watching overtime a live series brought to you by rick links and war room media your hosts have been greg williams and ryan ray for sponsorship opportunities send us an email at info at ricklinks.com tune in next thursday at 10 a.m cst for another live episode